there are many occasions where you might need to consider a sky replacement. Say you've gone out and captured some fantastic footage, but sadly when viewing the footage back, you see that the sky has lost all of its detail, either because you've had to expose for the subject, blowing out that detail, or perhaps the camera simply couldn't capture the full dynamic range of the scene. Sometimes also you just don't get blessed with the weather that you ideally wanted, and that the sky is either overcast or simply not interesting enough. If only you could replace that quickly and easily without complicated masks, tracking, or match move controls. Well, in DaVinci Resolve 18.1, with the new sky replacement effect, you can. And I'm gonna show you how to use it right now, so let's jump on in. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18.1, and we've got a couple of clips on the timeline that we're gonna to use to illustrate how the sky replacement tool works. So this particular clip I've got is a very simple sort of panning shot, and you can see the sky in this shot isn't particularly exciting, and so we need to do a sky replacement here. Now, before that would have been a little bit more complicated, but now with the sky replacement tool in 18.1, we can do that very easily, and we're gonna to hop to the color page to do it. So hopping over to the color page, you'll notice I've got a no graph that's already turned off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on for you to show you our finished result. Ta-da, new sky, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a new version here, and then we're going to go about doing it ourselves. So let me just create a new version, new local version, and I'm gonna call it version two, and I'm gonna delete the old look. So now we can actually jump back and forth between the two if we wanted to. So you can see we're on version two, there's our version one, like that, but we're gonna to go to version two and we're gonna rebuild this. So let me show you how that works. So here's our normal boring sky. What I'm gonna firstly do is I'm going to reset all the nodes and I've got a blank corrector node here. I'm gonna create another one. And on this node, I'm gonna do our qualification of our sky. And then what I wanna do is bring in the sky replacement effects. So I'm already actually on it here. It's in the resolve FX stylize. But if, when you open up your effects palette, you can't see it, simply go to the little magnifying glass, type in sky and you'll see it pop up right here. You can pull this particular effect directly onto a node if you'd like to do that. I personally feel that it's not the best way of doing it and you get a little bit more control with the way I'm gonna show you. So what we're gonna do is just take this and we're gonna drop it on the connecting line when you see the little plus symbol pop up, I'm gonna let go and that is going to put the sky replacement on its own FX node right in the middle of the pipeline there. So. What we're gonna do is qualify our sky in here, and then they're gonna feed that into the sky replacement node, essentially telling DaVinci Resolve and the sky replacement tool, this is the sky, please get rid of it for us. And then we've got some sky replacement tools here, which we're gonna look at in a bit. First thing that we have to do though, is qualify our sky. So as you can see, we're gonna have a little bit of trouble with this in this image because we've got blue sea and blue sky. But the good thing is that in DaVinci Resolve, we've got a very sophisticated qualifier called the 3D Kia. So we're gonna take 3D Kia, and we're gonna make sure that we are on the picker in this little left top corner here of the panel. And what we're gonna do is just simply draw on our blue area that we want to isolate. So I'm gonna click and drag, and just slowly drag out an area that I want. And I'm gonna let go. And actually, if I turn on my highlight mode, which is this one just here, you can see that we've got a pretty good key going on, but there's a few little errors just in the top here. We've also got some inclusions here that we need to get rid of. And we can do all of that with some matte finesse tuning if we do that in here. We can also use power windows as well to do that. So I'm just gonna show you how we go about that. But one thing I can do is make some further sort of qualifications some further key marks on the actual area I want. But if I do it with the picker still selected, watch what happens. If I do that now, it's gonna actually just re-key because if you don't change over to this option here, to the picker add, then you're actually gonna continue redoing your base key every single time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually redo our base key, like so. I'm then gonna switch over to the picker add, and I'm gonna add in early bits that I think I need to also grab. That's looking a bit better, just maybe in the top corner there. Okay, so we've got a good key going on initially, which is absolutely fine for us. And as I said, I could do some matte finesse controls in here to further tweak the key if I wanted to. So I might maybe clean up the blacks a little bit. I've got to be a bit careful because I don't want to take too much out of my edges. So I'm just going to be very, very gentle for now and not do too much. I'm also going to be a little bit quicker just for the sake of this tutorial. But you can see here that we've got a nice-ish key starting to go. I'm going to use a window just to start getting rid of some of these areas in here that I don't want. The biggest problem that we have, as you can see here, is that we've got a lot of C still selected in our isolation. So I'm going to use a gradient window for this. 
because it has a lovely straight line which sits perfectly on a horizon. So I'm just going to select the gradient, drag it over to my horizon, and then use the transform and softness controls here just to get the gradient sitting nicely on that horizon and hopefully getting rid of as much of that blue as we possibly can. So I'm just using the tilt controls and the softness controls here just to get a nice feeling that I've got most of that blue. I'm okay if it blurs slightly like that because we're going to have a bit of a blurring going on between the two anyway. So that's absolutely fine for me. I can also then just have a look at which other areas are still being picked up. And there's a little area here I want to address. So I'm just going to grab a little circular window. I'm going to keep a bit of softness on it. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to drag it over and pop it on there. And then I'm going to make sure to use this tool here, which essentially allows us to merge these two particular windows together. As you can see, if I then turn off that window, it's all gone. So there we have a situation where we're happy. We're going to just track that window just to make sure we really get rid of that. So with that selected, I'm going to go into my tracker. That window is now selected. Go to the tracker. I'm just going to track it backwards and forwards just to make sure that it doesn't actually show up and give me any problems. OK, so we're now happy that we've got that nice isolated blue sky and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to feed the alpha from this particular qualification node straight into our sky replacement and then I'm going to turn off my highlights and what we'll see if I turn off my window overlay is that we have a nice image here but with no sky because obviously we've got rid of the original sky and now we're going to use our sky replacement to build us a brand new sky. You could, if you wanted to feed in a sky, if you've got a stock sky image and you wanted to feed that in, you could absolutely just feed that in. This is what the extra inputs and outputs here are for on this FX node. But for us, we're going to use the sky replacement tools. And you can see here that we have an artificial sky option. If we wanted, we could just adjust the actual mask. And if we want, there's the mask itself. We could just adjust it ever slightly if we wanted to use some of the controls in here. But this is why I actually prefer to do it on a separate node just before, because we have a little bit more fine-tuned controls with all of the map finesse tools here in the panel. So let's jump back over the sky replacement and let's look at this artificial sky. So at the minute, you can't see a sky because we have got the opacity all the way down. As you can see here, opacity is at zero. So let's turn up our sky and we have a brand new sky. Very easy to do. And we can further finesse this. Obviously, it's not looking too bad, uh, but we have got to just change it and make it a little bit more realistic. So one of the things I quite like to do is change the height of the horizon. So this is just going to see, we can actually, if I just dial off the softness here between the horizon, you can see how our horizon line is now moving. And if I turn on the softness now, that just allows us to help sort of generate what I kind of class as a quite a nice natural fall off where you get this kind of white hazy area on the horizon and it sort of goes to the lovely dark rich blue sky above. So there we are, something quite nice there. We can also move the angle around if we wanted to. Unfortunately, the problem with this is if I turn it on and off, you'll see that actually there's no major difference really between what we've got and what we've created. Perhaps we the, the sky is a little bit more saturated and actually we can change the sky color at any point by simply clicking on our color picker and obviously changing the sky to whatever we want. If I just reset that, and maybe what I might want to do is maybe just reduce the saturation on it a little bit, make it slightly more realistic, perhaps there, so it fits and just blends with the image a little bit better. But now we can add some color and interest and detail to this sky by adding some clouds. And you can see cloud opacity is off. So let's just dial the cloud opacity on, and we'll start to see some clouds appearing in the sky. We're going to take the scale, and we're just going to just change the scale to bring a few more clouds into the mix. I'm going to change the shape ever so slightly. Just again, you can have a sort of a squashed cloud, or we can have a sort of slightly more round and fluffy cloud. And we're just going to change the scale again. And this is a little bit of a, a finesse. You can obviously play with this to be as creative as you want to. If you want to tilt the plane that the clouds are on, you can do that as well. I'm going to add a little bit of detail back in. But you can obviously go too far. With lots of these things, it's about subtlety. And so sort of less is more in most cases. You can actually fill the clouds in or kind of remove them as well. So we're just going to fill in a little bit of cloud there. And we're going to just maybe reduce the contrast a little bit, just allow the clouds to sort of blend a little bit more neatly with the rest of the image. And with the cloud time slider, what you can actually do, and all of these are keyframable. So if you wanted to, all of these parameters could be adjusted and keyframed over time. The cloud time actually allows us to sort of manipulate the way that clouds look in the sky and how they move through the sky. And again, if you keyframe that, that could look pretty amazing. But what I'm actually using it for in this instance is just to find a particular frame that I like to use for my sort of stock uh, cloud here. So I'm just going to move that until I get sort of a nice looking one for my particular shot. 
Something like that I think I quite like. So we're going to leave it there for the sake of this tutorial. That's really good. You can actually add a hotspot in if you wanted. So for example, you had an image where there was the sun and you needed to, you could actually have the sun in and then track the sun so that it actually kind of gave that look back, which again, is pretty cool. Haven't really experimented with that very much, but that's what you would do with that. And there we go. We've got a really cool looking sky. And if we wanted to come right down to the bottom, you can actually use the global blend slider to then blend it back between the two. So you can really get an effect that has something quite, quite pleasing, but also looks quite realistic as well. Now, if I just play forward on here, one of the problems you might notice, and this hasn't got a lot of movement, but in this case, uh, we've got an issue because our foreground and our background are not really moving correctly. The foreground's moving, the background's staying still, and obviously that wouldn't be the case. So what we need to now do is use the sky position parameters, again, inside the sky replacement tool, to, again, match the motion and do that. So in this instance, I can track the foreground, I can use keyframes, I can use an effects tracker, or I can track the original sky. In this case, I'm going to track the foreground, and I'm going to just track the foreground like that. That'll quickly go away and track the foreground. And one of the things you might notice is just we're getting a small issue up in this top corner here, because obviously as that's trying to manipulate the background plate to sort of fit the movement that we're now telling it to, obviously we're getting some issues with that. So we need to fix that. And the great thing is it's very easily fixed because there's a button here, again, that says auto size for motion. We're gonna simply click it and it just resets itself and away we go. Now I have had some issues with this particular tool and the way that it matches the motion and it depends on how much movement there is in the camera. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it's not so good. And I'll show you a couple of examples in a minute. But uh, yeah, there we are. We've got a sky and if we watch it through, I'm gonna make it big. That is a pretty awesome sky replacement where we've created a nice realistic sky that's a little bit more subtle and it's got enough detail to make it look like it's real. And again, we'll just do the before and after again. Before and after. Pretty cool. And that really didn't take too long. And hopefully with this tutorial, you'll be able to do it yourself very easily now. Uh, so there we go. Let's just look at these couple of other selections I've got for you to have a look at. Here is another shot that we had. So we had a horrible sort of overcast sky. There we go. And again, not particularly helpful. What I actually do is I'll just take you the all of the grade off so you can see it completely. There we are. Not particularly nice at all. Bit of a sort of dull image overall. So what we've done here is just simply created a, a grade. Uh, I've actually just created a, an outside node here. So once I've qualified the sky, I used an outside node, which essentially is an, a node that selects everything that's not the node before it or not in the original qualification. And as you can see, I then use that to grade the foreground. But again, same principle, I drew my qualification. In this case, I used a 3D Kia, and then I also used some windows, and then track those windows, just to make sure that I got rid of this white area in the middle, because of course, I was picking a relatively white sky, so these white posters were popping up and kind of being included in my selection. So I've used some windows to just get rid of those and sort of isolate those, so we weren't picking that up as well. And then we fed all that through into the sky replacement tool. And then once it was there, we simply built out our sky replacement tool as normal. And then the one thing we did that was slightly different is we used the FX tracker to match the motion of the camera, because there's quite a big camera move in this particular sequence. It sort of pivots around and there's a lot of perspective change. So I just simply use the FX tracker. And if I show you where my FX overlay is, we go to the FX tracker. You can see I've just created a couple of tracking points, track the church instead, which is really kind of one of the closer items to the sky that I could. And then once I track those, I then simply use the FX tracker in the match motion parameter to then make sure that my sky matched the background. And as you can see, I think it's done a pretty good job. Certainly not perfect, but certainly not bad at all. And again, I didn't need to be a FX artist to go ahead and do that. It was very simple to do. My last example for you is an interesting one because we start with the pan down. So we don't actually see any sky at all. And then it pans up and we see our new sky. So if I just turn everything off again, show you what that looks like. That was the original sky. There's the new sky that I've replaced it with. And what we've got here is a shot that actually starts with no sky in the shot at all, and then pans up. But you'll notice that if I play this big, it actually looks pretty good indeed. And that has matched in and, you know, really done a good job in terms of kind of keeping the movement. And again, for this one, we didn't do anything particularly different. We again used our 3D key in this instance to just key out our initial node. So if I go here, we just keyed out the sky. 
There we are. So we just keyed out the sky. We used some windows and we did a little bit of tracking just to make sure that this all stayed put and was in exactly the right place for us. And then when I came over and we turned on our sky replacement and we added that sky replacement FX node in, we fed the alpha in and then we started making some adjustments in here. And then the only thing that, again, we did slightly differently to the original clip that we looked at is the match motion parameter. We use the FX tracker. So again, I just tracked two points on the particular um, foreground of our clip. So essentially it was working a bit like a foreground tracker. I then had to auto size for motion just to refit the background plate after we'd done that motion match. And again, this is where we are. So again, a good result. And of course, the nice thing is I could change this sky up as ever I wanted. And again, I can grade them together as one shot or I can grade them independently. It really is up to me. So again, there we are. That's the sky replacement in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. There you go. I'm sure you'll agree that that's a really handy new tool in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. And I hope that this video helps you understand how to use it a little better. I, for one, would like to see it improve over time. But how about yourself? Have you tried using the sky replacement tool yet? If you have, then let me know what you think in the comments below. It'd be great to get a conversation going. If you found value in the video, please do take a moment and pound the like button for me. It really helps me know I'm on the right track and producing videos that help you with learning DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't already, then do consider subscribing and turning on those notifications to ensure that you know when I release new videos and we've got lots more DaVinci Resolve videos coming very soon that I'm sure you won't want to miss. That's going to do it though for this video. Thank you so much for watching and continue supporting the channel. Until I see you next time, bye for now.